Now, last week, um, you spent a day looking at three words that started with M that you've met before, right? What are the words? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Mean. Um, and it's worth, even though you've um, been looking at these already, I'd love you to write them again because we're going to briefly discuss them and learn some stuff about them that will help us do the next exercise. Mean, median, median, and mode. Okay. Yeah. Emily has a song that helps you remember which is which. It's very is, it, is it a rhyme that has to do with um, a cat? The middle, the median, the middle, and the back, the mean, the mode is the one that you see the most in the range of the difference between them. Very good. Yeah. Well, should, I should, yeah. well I might, I, I've seen it before. I should make, make a poster out of it and print that. We can all look at it. That helps me pass for it. <laughs> no, it works. Okay, well, let's just run with it, right? Now, what I'm going to do is just quickly re revise, like, what is each one? But more importantly, this is what 11... <coughs> is about like when do you pick do you remember when we were looking at um, sa sample sizes and all that kind of thing and which kind of sample should you choose and the hardest thing about all of this is not calculating it but choosing one that's tricky okay so let's remember for the mean how do we find the mean I'll give you a clue it's a fraction uh, okay so you said a couple of things there and they kind of sort of gel together and um, the mean is also called the average but the way to find an average is to add up all the scores, so that's the sum. And then the thing you divide by, as Daddy mentioned, was how many scores do you have? So it's the sum of the scores divided by the number of scores. I've written it in this particular way because you'll find this exact wording on the formula data sheet. Out of all three of these, this is the only one that's there. But that's okay because if you think about the other two and their definitions, you don't need a formula for either of these. Um, as the rhyme says, the median is the? Median. It's the middle score. Now, I actually want to give you a slightly better definition for that. It's a score such that there's the same number of scores above you and the same number of scores below you. Uh, let me write that and then I'll unpack why I think this is a better definition. It's a score such that um, <coughs> there's the same number above as below. Okay. Now, um, the reason why I point this out is that remembering the middle is a good idea for like remembering the concept of it. But the problem with saying the median is the middle score is that there isn't always a middle score. Let me give you a quick example. and Maybe you want to jot this down on the side in another colour. Here's a set of scores. Which is the middle score? Three and six. Now, there, there isn't a middle score, is there, right? Because you'd say, well, the middle score is like in between here somewhere. It's not this guy, and it's not this guy. It's somewhere in the middle. Right, exactly. So what I have to do is I have to say, it's the mean, it's the average of the middle scores. So that's why the middle is like a sort of shorthand definition, but it's not always the middle score because there isn't always a middle score. So in this case, it would be 3 plus 6 on 2, which we've mentioned is 4 and a half. Okay. So you need to know what the mean is to find out what the mean is. Okay. What's the mode? Most frequently occurring. Okay. Most frequently occurring. Okay. Now we've got them in this order. Is it occurring a double R or one R? I always look at. Oh, it's two. Is it two? Okay. Let's let's fix it. Then. Um, I've got them in this order because this is roughly speaking the order that you'll. Um, find them <laughs> most frequently occurring actually. The average, the average is the one you see over and over again. Um, the median comes up next and then the mode is the least common one. Okay, So I want to unpack why that is. Why is it like this? So let me pull up, I have a spreadsheet here I want to show you. Mm, here we go. Okay. So here are some scores. Okay. Now I didn't mention why um, I've given this heading, right? You might have seen it in the textbook, this phrase. The reason why we call all of these measures of central tendency is because they're ways of saying, hey, in a group, like a group of people or in a group of scores, what's the center of the group? What would be considered normal in this group, okay? So you can see, uh, if you squint really hard, you'll see a bunch of scores on the left. It's not that important. But each one of them is represented by a column. And then this red line is the average. Okay. Now have a look. Would you say that's a fair um, summary of where the middle of the group is, where the centre is? 
Let's see what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. Like, look, there's a bunch above, above, a bunch below, and they're about the same distance. So I'm happy with that. Okay. Now, these um, scores here, you can see I've actually calculated the mean up there in the top left. You can see it in the yellow box. It's about 23,266. I just fashioned some numbers that could be like kind of part time, small income type jobs and the um, annual income that you've got. And these are all in the sort of 20,000s and I've ranked them. So you can see I've got the lowest income there, 19,000. And this one here is 28,000. Now, this is the average, the mean. It's fine so far, but watch what happens if I take the, um, the biggest earner here, who's got 28,000, and just give him a little bit of a raise, okay? Let's say he gets a big raise, <laughs> okay? Now, have a look at what's happened, right? I've, I've uh, decoupled their income, so now it's 280,000, no. which I should point out is still not that crazy. There's plenty of people in our country who earn this amount of money. <laughs> Now have a look at the data and have a look at what's happened to the mean. In fact, you can have a look at it in two ways. You've got the number at the top and you've also got the red line. Okay. Is the mean a good description of the center of this group? It's not, is it? Right? Because if you have a look, it's um, almost $32,000. Right? And you can see the next person after our $280,000 earner, the next person's like $27,000 or something like that. So every single person in our group except for one, has a, an income that's way below this mean. It's not a good description of the center at all. Okay? In fact, the mean is only useful if you've got data kind of like this. We call it normally distributed. Right? So therefore, um, if you've got another color, red would be probably the most useful. You've got to be careful with the mean. Right? The reason you've got to be careful is because it's influenced by really, really high or really low scores, like the one I just showed you. Right? Uh, we have a special name for these kinds of scores. It starts with an O. Outlier. Yeah, we call them outliers. So the more um, outliers you have and the more extreme they are, the more you influence things like this. And by the way, the reason I picked out income is because world incomes are exactly like this. Um, you've got a huge number of people who have this small amount of income and a very tall amount of people, a uh, small amount of people rather, the 1%, who are outliers and they throw off your averages. So, um, you use this in most cases, but if you've got outliers, if you've got um, skewed data, you're kind of in trouble. So, using the median now, I want to show you when the median is more useful. Here we go. <clears throat> so here's some data that doesn't really have outliers the way I described before, okay? But do you see it's kind of leaning towards one side rather than the other? Okay. Um, this, these are the scores going higher and higher and higher this way. So most people are on the negative end of the spectrum, okay? Now, does anyone remember, this is called a, a skewed population, does anyone remember what kind of skew it is? Negative, it's like, yeah. Huh, like, now, this is like such a sneaky thing. We're gonna spend some more time on this, but I thought since I'm showing you the picture, I might as well refer to it. This is actually positively skewed. It's kind of like, yeah, it's, it's really sneaky. So the way I remember it is, um, you've got a tail here. You see that, right? You've got a hump here, this big cluster of people, and then you've got a tail. When you talk about which way something is skewed, you're actually referring to which way the tail is facing. Okay, so the tail is facing in the positive direction, so it's positive skewed. Okay, now because you've got lots of people um, sort of going up in really high values, they're taking the mean, they're dragging it up in exactly the same way that um, this guy. Let's make the change again. In exactly the same way that this final score is dragging the mean upwards. Okay, so over here. All of these guys are dragging the mean over there. But look, look at where most of the people are. This is a much better, the median, this is a much better description of what the center of the group is. Okay? There's one other useful thing that you can say. So this is talking about the median now. It's useful for skewed data, like the one we're looking at right now. It's also really useful if you think back to this diagram. Do you remember we talked about four different kinds of data? Four different kinds of data? Some of the data, only some of the data, can be averaged, right? Have a think. What are the kinds of data? Do you remember them again? Categorical. Okay, good. Categorical and? Numerical. Starts with a Q. Quantitative. Yeah, very good. Numbers, right? Numerical. Underneath, let's go with quantitative first. Underneath quantitative, there's two kinds. Yep, separate ones, like one, two, three, four, five. And continuous, where you measure something like heights or weights or whatever. And then under categorical, the word ones, again, there's two. Ordinal, Ordinal which means there's an order, like, um, you know, 
worst, okay, best, and then what's the other one? Okay, very good. Um, so, good job. When you have a look at something like, say, uh, these guys, right? These guys are okay for averages. You can average them out just fine. But if you have a look at something like this, remember I mentioned like the quality of an object, right? So really terrible, sort of okay, neutral, etc. How are you going to average something like that? They're words. You can't average words. Um, that's the whole problem with this whole set. But you can take a median of words. You can tell which one the middle word is that's uh, where are you getting all your scores. Okay? So it's useful for skewed data or categorical ordinal data. Okay, and that's going to be my last um, moment to speak about this last one. Remember I said it's the least common. Again, it's about the data type, right? So I've already said these two are okay because you could take the average, it's fine. This guy's okay because you could take the median. What's left over? Yeah, this is like, oh, okay, eye color. You can't average it out. You can't say there's a middle eye color either. Why not? Why can't you use it? Because middle. they don't have any order. Yeah, like to get them to get them in a um, whoopsie daisy. To get them into something like this, I had to have them ranked. Did you notice that? Right, I had to go from lowest to highest, etc. If you can't order them, you can't find a median because there's no middle. So therefore, for this nominal data, go back to my red. For nominal data, the mode is the only thing you can use. Uh, but most data that we're looking at that we're interested in is not nominal. That's why this one comes up less frequently. Okay.